Welcome to the Preliminary Cost Estimating Tool Training Series. In this segment, we'll be taking a look at the item list and project cost tabs. Okay, we're going to take a look at the item list tab. Um, we're starting out with a project that we went through um, the data entry tab with. Um, if you're curious as to how we got to this point, you can check out our other videos, uh, general overview uh, through percentage-based items. Um, we'll walk you through these sections individually and um, give you an idea of how we uh, came to have this item list. So we're here in the item list tab. Um, just taking a quick look here. We have our item numbers, units, item description, quantity, uh, regional regression price, regional weighted average price, statewide regression price, statewide weighted average price, an override price column, price used, and the amount. So um, just taking a look after going through. Um, have quite a bit of items in here. Uh, the first thing I want to uh, point your attention to is the override price column. Um, if there is not a price for a particular item, you are going to see this highlighted cell here. Um, so there are a few items here that have that. and. Uh, this basically means you're going to have to put a price in for these things because there's not enough data available for this to come up with a price on its own. So typically you'd go into the pay item catalog, take a look at prices. Maybe you know another job in, in particular that used a, an item. Um, that's the case uh, go ahead and look it up and you can come up with a price to put in here um, for an example I'll put 50 in here and then this one we'll put I don't know a thousand and a thousand for this also and then once you do that you'll see the highlights are gone we now have a complete uh, list of prices. Um, so let me just talk about uh, how it's coming up with the quantity here. So this is looking at all of the itemized lists in each of the, of the worksheet tabs. Um, and then it compiles all of these together and sums a total for each item. Um, so you don't have duplicate items or, or anything like that. It's all automatic here. Um, the uh, pricing database, uh, which will be updated quarterly, um, comes from actual bid history and uh, uses the same methodology that uh, Transport Estimator uses to come up with, with its pricing. Um, the only different, the big difference here is it rounds up to the nearest dollar. Um, so you get whole dollar amounts for these prices. Um, so for price utilized, the priority is first it's gonna look at the override price Next, it will look at a regional regression analysis if it's available. Uh, after that, it'll look for a regional weighted average if it's available. Then it will go to statewide regression and then statewide weighted. So for example, um, item 20302 here, uh, it has a regional regression. So it will use that price. So. Um, we come down here to uh, this item, 
does not have a regional regression or weighted, so it's going to look at the statewide regression, and that is what's used. Um, this item here has a regional weighted average. Well, they're all a dollar, so you can't really tell the difference, so that might not be the best example. But if we come down to uh, the curve item, um, there's not one available for the regional regression. Um, so it will use the regional weighted average, uh, which is reflected over here. Um, here's one for statewide regression, and then statewide weighted average. So that's how uh, this comes up with the unit prices automatically. Um, one limitation to this I do want to mention, when you have these override prices in, if you uh, have a change in the item list, uh, the, the unit price or the override price will not move until you go back into this tab. So you may have an inaccurate price. So if you, if you fill out anything in this override price column, um, and then afterwards you, ch you change anything in this workbook that causes this item list to change, make sure you come back and open this item list tab so that, that those prices will update um, because they will not do so automatically. Uh, let's move on to our project cost tabs. Um, there are two of them. One is for a design bid build format. The other one is a design build format. Uh, starting off with design bid build, um, you will get all of your amounts from your data entry tab here. Um, If you would like to override an amount for any particular section, you can do so over here. For example, maybe we just want to round this up to $2 million for pavement. Uh, we can do so in this column. And you'll see that was reflected over here in this table. And that works in a similar fashion for all of these. Um, for your percentage-based items, uh, what that percentage is being based off of is this range of cells right here, the sum of those, uh, in case you are curious uh, from our percentage-based item video, uh, where, where those numbers are coming from. Um, and then here we have our percentage-based items. Uh, we have the bridge items. Uh, moving on, we have uh, miscellaneous incidentals. By default, there's 10% in here. Um, per EI 18005, uh, you can use up to 10% at the design approval stage. Um, be sure to take a look and adjust that as, as needed based on your project specifics. Uh, moving down, uh, you have field change and mobilization calculated. And then you have a uh, contingency risk, um, again per EI 18005. Uh, in the note here you have uh, typical ranges uh, for various uh, project phases um, that you can take a look at, help guide you. Again, take a look at your specific project and put something in here that makes sense. Um, inflation escalation to midpoint of construction. So these dates here, uh, if we go back to the data entry tab up top, so you have your estimate date and your letting date here, and then your construction duration. So for the first date in that tab, it's going to use 2020. For the next, it's going to use your letting date plus one half of your duration. So in this case, it will put the year at 2022, which is what we're going to see here. This 2% inflation is, is your annual inflation. It's not overall. Um, so in this case, you have two years. It's going to be 2% per year. 
um, and there is uh, guidance for this um, that that will tell us to use two percent. Um, final design, QC, construction inspection. Uh, there's various guidance for that. Um, you got some notes here to, to help you out in determining an appropriate amount for each of these. And let's go to design build. Um, up top here, all of this is exactly the same. Um, you lose the field change mobilization. Um, very similar, you have these notes to help guide you uh, what appropriate percentages are to use. Um, be sure to, to come in and make sure that these are applicable to your project and use appropriate percentages here. And I think that covers the item list and project cost tab.